hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to show you how i met this dress this has been a request since i posted it on my social media and um this dress was made out of uh, one of my tutorials which was a top that i previously made in the video so this video is going to basically be both uh right from the beginning to the end simply because um Whenever I do part twos of videos, most people are like, uh, we can't see part one. So I decided to do the video all over again. I decided to merge the top tutorial and then end with the dress tutorial. So it's more like a two in one. You can do whatever you wish to make with this tutorial. So let's get started. So for the materials, you'll need any yarn. I'm using a fingering weight yarn and I'm going to be using two colors, but you can go ahead and uh, use uh, whatever number of colors that you want for your top. You can go as many as uh, seven colors or three colors or four colors, that's up to you. Uh, you also need a measuring tip. This is going to measure the full bust measurement. So you need to just know your full bust measurement. For me, I'm going to consider 32, which is a size small, 32 inches. Then you also need a pair of scissors. Uh, the hook that I'm going to use is a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. But you can go ahead and use whatever hook that you have or whatever hook that's recommended for the yarn that you're going to use. Then you also need a dunning needle to weave in your ends. Uh, more about the yarn, uh, you can use Maserai's cotton yarn, that's the yarn that I would recommend for you to use. Uh, I didn't use this because I already had my granny squares finished and they were worked with this yarn. This is Robin, it's 100% acrylic and it's a fingering weight yarn but you can go ahead and use whatever yarn that you, use, that you want because um, the instructions are just going to be general they are going to give you uh, a good fitting for your top as long as you follow them to the dot so let's begin so you're going to grab your first color for me that is going to be nude brown and you're going to make a magic ring After making your magic ring or magic circle, you're going to chain three and place two more double crochets into the same magic circle. This is one and two. So counting the chain three as one of our stitches, so far we have three stitches. So you're going to chain two and go into the same magic ring and place a total of three double crochets. You're going to chain two, three more double crochets into the same magic circle. Chain two, and three double crochets into the same magic circle. So at this point you have a total of one, two, three, and four clusters of three double crochets. So you're going to pull on this tail of your magic circle and close up your ring. Then you're going to chain two and go on top of the chain three, the first chain three of your round, which is the first stitch. It counted as one stitch, so you're going to go on top of that chain and place your slip stitch. So you can see the chain two spaces are creating corners, and we have a total of four corners, which creates a square. So uh, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch slip stitch into the next stitch slip stitch into the chain two space so now we've reached our first corner we're going to chain three and place two more double crochets into the C 
space and chain two space then you're going to chain two and place three more double crochets so here we place two double crochets because the chain three counts as a stitch so so far we have three double crochets chain two three double crochets which in this tutorial I'll consider this to be a shell a shell is three double crochets chain two three double crochets then you're going to chain one and then go into the next corner with a shell keep in mind a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets like that so you're going to chain one go into the next chain two space or the next corner with a shell so each corner gets a shell like that and then chain one and go into the last chain two space with three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets which counts as a shell so keep in mind that the chain two spaces create the corners every corner gets a shell then you're going to chain one and slip stitch on top of the chain three at the beginning of our round so just make sure you go into the top of the chain three and from here i'm going to chain one and cut my yarn because i'm going to do two rows of each color so i'm going to pull through this and now i'm going to get my second color which is sky blue i'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to attach my sky blue into this space next to this tail. So remember that's a chain one space. Because it's not a corner. So you're going to chain three. And place two more double crochets into that same exact space. So two more double crochets so that counts as three double crochets and now you're going to chain one go into the corner with a shell so by now you know what a shell is it's three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets like that and then you're going to chain one and go into the next chain one space with three double crochets so as long as it's not a corner it's always a chain one so chain one and go into the next corner with a shell so just keep it in mind that whenever you do the three double crochets you have to chain something after so if it's not a corner that's definitely a chain one something like this so i'm done with my three double crochets and since this is not a corner i'll chain one and go into the chain one space with only three double crochets all chain one spaces get only three double crochets all chain two spaces are corners that means they get shells so chain one and this is a corner so it gets a shell which is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets all in the same space i hope i'm explaining it right if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section and then i'll chain one and go into the chain one space and place uh three double crochets remember all chain one spaces get only three double crochets chain one because it's not a corner but now this is a corner so it will get 
three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets which counts as a shell all right so this is not a corner so you'll chain one and slip stitch into the very first chain three that you made in the topmost chain then you're going to chain sorry now this is the next row so you will slip stitch until you get to the chain one space we want to move into the chain one space so you slip stitch into each and every stitch until you get to the space and then you're going to chain three which counts as a stitch double crochet two more times into the same space so that's a total of three chain one this is a corner so it gets a shell after that you're going to chain one go into the next chain one space with uh, three double crochets chain one three double crochets into the next space chain one this is a corner so it gets a shell chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one this is a corner so it gets a shell so let me speed through this because by now you should be knowing what to do So we are placing our last three double crochets into the last chain one space like that and you can see that corners are almost definite like we can't mistake them to be anywhere else so chain one and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn So we are done with round four so we are going to continue building our work you're going to continue building onto your square until this length is quarter of your bust measurement so for me I use 32 as the reference figure so I'm going to continue working until I have a total of eight inches that means I haven't yet gotten the measurement that I want if you want it tight fitted then you're going to continue working until you have eight inches when stretched so that even on your body it can stretch the same exact way but I'm going to just continue working until I have my eight inches because I want mine loose fitted so once you realize how many rows that you need for your uh, quarter of your bust measurement for me that took me nine rows to get to eight inches so you can see that 32 divided by four is eight so I have exactly eight inches so this is the granny square the very first granny square is going to determine how many rows that you need in order to get quarter of your bust measurement so once you finish off this you're going to chain one I've already chained one here and you are going to cut your yarn pull through 
and leave that tail there. We shall deal with it later. So you're going to go ahead and make three more um, granny squares less by one row. So you can see this. I did uh, three more granny squares, but these are eight rows. They're only uh, remaining with one row in order to become full like this one. But what I'm going to do is to work the final row while joining onto the granny square that was full. So you're going to get your boundary color. For me, that is the brown because it's the one that I've used to work the final round of uh, um, of my round. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is to reattach my yarn and work one side of the granny square just like I did for this one when I was starting from here to the next corner. So I'm going to put this aside and when I get to this corner before I chain my two chains in between the three double crochet clusters, I'm going to chain one, remove my hook and grab one of the corners on this side. So I'll grab this one and then put that loop that you left behind onto the hook, pull through and then you're going to chain one more. So it's more like a chain two and then go onto the next side working uh, three double crochets into the same space. But now we are starting to work on this other side. So continue to just uh, go into each chain space with three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. So have a look at what's going on. We have joined the first granny square to the next granny square. And this can either be the front side of your work or the back side. So we are going to go all the way around and finish up this round and I'll meet you back when I'm done with that. So this row is helping us to go around the second granny square with our final row, with your final color, whatever color you've chosen to use. So when you get to the end of your row, you're going to chain one and place three more double crochets into the chain two space. And then you're going to chain two and slip stitch on top of the first chain three that you made, which counts as the first double crochet. After that slip stitch, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So this is how we have done the final row on the second granny square. So we are going to go ahead and repeat the same exact process until we have four granny squares in line. So these are two. I'm going to do the same exact process for this one. Just like I joined this one to this one, I'm going to join the same exact way, this one to this one. And then I'll also join this one to this one. So I'll come back when I have that ready. So when it comes to the last granny square, you can see we have three right now. 
and I've worked the first side of the last granny square since we have to have four so I've chained one and I'm going to join it to this one to this corner here I want them to be in one line so if you're to notice I always join at those points like that so after joining here with your chain one you're going to go into that same space with uh, three more double crochets chain one chain two three double crochets chain one continue to do that until the next corner and this time it's going to change a bit I had forgotten to mention that because this last granny square joins onto two granny squares so that we can start working our top in rounds so that it can form a round shape that can go around your body Actually, not the next corner, because the next corner is going to be up here. That means when we get to this corner, that's when uh, something is going to change. You're not going to just pass by here. So I'll meet you back at this point. So we are at that corner that I had told you about after your chain one here. You're going to go into the chain two space with three double crochets chain one and then we are going to join this corner here onto this first corner on this side so you're going to just turn your work around like this and then make sure this is on the wrong side because we are joining onto this side so that the right sides face the same direction chain one and then go all the way down to finish up your granny square so you're going to continue to work this until you get to this corner and then finish up your granny square as usual So at this point, after joining all the four granny squares at those different points, you're going to have something that looks like this. So now we are going to start working on the pieces that are going to fill in these gaps. And uh, since I want a crop top, these are going to be half granny squares. So uh, you're going to get your first color. I'm going to put this away because this is literally done. So I'm going to put it away for now and I'm going to start working the pieces that are going to fill in the gaps at the base of our top. So you're going to grab your first color and for me I followed the same color combination. So I first did brown, then sky blue, brown, sky blue, then brown. And you can see two rows, two rows, two rows, two rows, and then one row of brown. So I'm going to follow the same exact flow. So I'm going to make a magic ring. And then you're going to make a chain of four. Sorry, a chain of five. And then you're going to go into the same magic ring with a total of three granny square, three double crochets sorry and then you're going to chain two and three more double crochets and then you're going to chain one sorry chain two and then one double crochet so it's chain five which counts as a double crochet chain two and then three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, and then one double crochet. And then you're going to pull this tail and close off the round, the magic ring. And now I'm going to chain five, turn my work, and into this space, you're going to go in there with 
three double crochets chain one and then in this chain two space this is a corner so it will get a total of three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact space so remember just as we did on the granny square this is going to create a corner here and then you're going to chain one and go into the last space there and place a total of three double crochets chain two and three more double crochet that's how we end our rows for this uh, half granny square so after your last double crochet there you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so I told you I'm following the same exact pattern as um, as the other granny squares so two rows of brown are done and that's how they look like so I'm going to get my next color which is blue And I'm going to make a slip knot and attach onto this stitch where we left off with a brown. So into that last stitch. I'm going to just attach my yarn there. And then chain five. That's how we start our row. Go into the first chain to space with a total of three double crochets. chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space so you should notice all the chain one spaces get three double crochets as long as it's on the side of the body of the granny square so chain one this is a chain two and it's a corner so it gets three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets chain one this is a chain one so you'll have three double crochets chain one this is the last space so I told you for the last space you put three double crochets chain two and then one double crochet to finalize the round the row because this is not worked in rounds so after this you're going to chain five which counts as a double crochet chain two turn your work three double crochets into the first chain two space chain one into the chain one space you're going to go in there with three double crochets chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one this is our corner so we place three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets chain one go into the next chain one space with three double crochets chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one and into the last space there you're going to go in there with a total of three double crochets chain two and one last double crochet to finish up the row then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn because now we have two rows of blue so you can see the base of the half granny square is very very flat and that's what we want um, after this you're going to switch to your brown color again and do the same exact thing so we're going to repeat this row until we have a total of eight rows because the final row is supposed to help us join onto the body of the top so continue 
to do two rows of brown two rows of blue and then I'll meet you back on the final row of uh, of brown or whatever colors that you chose to use don't forget to always start with a chain of five and then three double crochets into the first chain to space and always end with uh, three double crochets into the last space chain two and three double crochets into the same exact last space So now that we are done with our eight rows, we have two, 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 two. So we have eight rows in total. So I'm going to grab my last color of yarn, which is the last row that's supposed to finalize here. So I'm going to attach it into the last stitch of the blue. Like that. And I'm going to chain four. This time not five because I want to chain the fifth when I'm done with attaching onto the corner. So you're going to just decide which place you want to insert this half granny square. So this is going to fit into this space here, like that. So in order to do that, you're going to chain four and then attach it into this corner here attach and then chain the fifth and then you're going to place three double crochets into the first chain to space then you're going to chain one remove your hook go into the next space here attach and then three double crochets into the next chain space like that so chain one Remove your hook, go into the next space here, attach, and then three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, remove hook, go into the next space, attach, and three double crochets into the next space. So we are going to just repeat that until we get to the corner. In order to attach, you just uh, remove your hook and then pull that loop that you left behind through the, the chain one space on the other side. So I'm in the corner right now and I'm placing my three double crochets. So you can see how I've attached my, 
my two granny squares this is the four granny square this is the half granny square so you can see how that has played out nicely so after this after your three uh, double crochets into the corner you're going to chain one and then attach into the corner of this granny square and then you're going to chain one and then remove your hook and attach into the corner of the second granny square because now we are going to be attaching this half granny square onto the other side and then you're going to chain one so place three more double crochets into the same space in order to create a corner on this granny square on the half granny square then you're going to chain one remove your hook go into the next space attach and three double crochets into the half granny square so this remains the same nothing changes but I want to show you how that looks like for now when I lay my work flat you can see that uh, the half granny square is fitting into the space that we had left behind so it's just fitting in well I think the tension my tension was a little bit tight on two on the big granny squares but that doesn't matter I think it's it's working out perfectly fine so I'm going to just continue to do this attaching the half granny square onto the full granny squares So I'm placing my last three double crochets into the last space of the half granny square. Then chain one, remove your hook, attach into the corner of the full granny square. Then chain one more and place one last double crochet into the same space. Then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So let's see how this has turned out. If we put our work like this you can see that uh, the half granny square has just sat in that space in the space that we had left behind so that means this is the base of our work and this is the upper side of our work where the straps are going to be attached so I'm going to go ahead and make another half uh, granny square attach it into this space here the same exact way that I've done this and then make another one attach it here and make one last one and attach it here in order to have a flat base for my uh, top so this has covered this we need three more uh, half granny squares in order to cover all these gaps and then I'll meet you back to show you what to do next So after filling in these gaps at the base, this is how your work is going to look like. It's going to be flat at the base and then we have these two granny squares that are going to cover our bust area. Then the two granny squares that are going to go to the back. And you can notice while I was working, I noticed that uh, the final row on the half granny square adds up to the final row of the full granny square which creates two rows of brown so there's nothing that looks awkward it's still a flow of two two rows per color so you're going to get your boundary color for me that's still brown and make a slip knot and now we are going to start working on our strap 
so for the strap I've done a slip knot here I'm going to go into this space before the shell this is a shell so this space here and I'm going to make a chain of five So I have my five chains there and I'm going to go into the shell with a shell. So three double crochets. Chain two and three more double crochets. So after that, I'm going to go into the next uh, space here with a treble crochet. So I've yarned over twice. Um, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So this is the only time that we are doing these long stitches. So from now on, we are going to chain three, turn our work, place a shell into the chain two space from the previous row. So that's three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And then place a double crochet into this space chain three and repeat that repeat the same exact process until you get the length of the strap that you want I'm going to go on making this until I get the strap that I want for my top I'll let you know how many rows that I did so if I'm to lay down my work like this You'll notice that now uh, we've started working on the strap of our top like that so I'll let you know how many rows that I did for my strap and this will vary depending on different body types so I decided to do a total of 15 rows for my strap but I did a total of 14 so that I can show you how to finish up the 15th while joining it to this corner on the other side of your work so we are joining the two corners together using a strap so just like I did here I worked on this one first to first test and see how it will come out so we want this strap here to join onto that corner there so after my 14th row, I'm going to chain 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you're going to make sure your strap is not twisted. So for me, I have to join this corner onto this side. So pull through that loop and prepare for a double crochet and make a total of three double crochets chain chain one remove your hook and join it into the chain to space of the shell on the opposite side chain one more so that's a total of two chains and then place three more double crochets into the same chain to space and then remove your hook attach into this next space after the shell pull through and prepare for a treble crochet and go into the last space with your treble crochet and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so that's how I worked my strap you're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing for the other side because uh, you are working on your first strap so make sure the straps are the same length and make sure you just get the perfect fit for you uh, for your top if you want them longer go ahead and make more rows for the strap if you want them shorter you can reduce the length of the strap by reducing on the number of rows that you do for the strap so we are now going to that lower part you can see all this mess don't worry about it we shall get rid of that uh, this is because there was too much cutting and breaking of yarn while uh, switching colors when it came to the uh, the half granny squares 
so you're going to sit down and first get rid of all these strands if it means tying if it means um weaving in with your darning needle do that and then we shall come back when we have a clean edge or a clean surface to work with then we shall continue with the downer part of our project after getting rid of all the loose ends you'll have something that looks like this it's not as messy as it was before so you're going to get your main yarn which is brown it's going to make the first row at the base of our top make a slip knot turn your work around like this you're going to just attach your yarn in any spot so we're going to be working into the rows so the rows are these ones into the different rows so you're going to attach your yarn into any row of your choice and then you're going to chain three uh, double crochet two more times into the same row so we want to keep the flow of the granny square look the granny square look yeah so the clusters are still going to surface so this counts as three double crochets and then you're going to chain one go into the next row with three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets so we are creating the ruffle part of the top so chain one three double crochets into the next row chain one and then a shell into the next row so the shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets so you can see the ruffle has started forming so chain one and into the next row you only place three double crochets chain one into the next row you're going to make a shell three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets so we are going to repeat this all the way around until we get back to this point where we started from let me go ahead and do that I'll meet you back at the end of my round so I'm coming to the end of my round and this wasn't an increase so in the last shell I'll chain one and place a shell in the last row sorry I'll place a shell because I started my round with only three double crochets in the very first row so that means I have to end with a shell in the last row so after this you're going to chain one and slip stitch into the first stitch that you made for your round so this is how your top will look like the ruffles have already formed that's how it looks like so you're going to continue to work on the ruffle part I'll take you through the first row uh, you're going to sorry you're going to slip stitch until you get to a chain one space so slip stitch into the next stitch slip stitch into the next stitch and then slip stitch into the space the chain one space chain three and place three sorry two more double crochets to make a total of three double crochets here chain one go into the next chain two space and this time we are only placing a total of three double crochets we are no longer increasing after that you're going to chain chain one and go into the next space and place three double crochets chain one go into the next space with three double crochets chain one three double crochets into the next space so it doesn't matter whether it's a chain one or a chain two space 
you're just going to go in there with only three double crochets all the way around and you're going to repeat this row until the length that you want for your ruffles and I'll meet you back at that point I'll let you know how many rows that I did for mine so after repeating your this round again and again you will have to form the dress so make sure you don't do any increases or decreases at this point because everything was shipped on the very first round of the dress when we turned it into uh, that dress bit the skirt bit of the dress so you're going to go ahead and make as many rows as you wish to get the length that you want i did a total of 40 rounds and this is my 40th now uh, I have my yarn attached here after my very last round and I'm going to just show you how to make the edging of the dress we are going to bring back the same exact aspect as we had on the sleeves and the neck opening so make sure your work is on the right side you will just chain three and then double crochet three more times into the same exact chain one space like that after your three double crochets you're going to single crochet into the next chain one space and then you're going to chain three double crochet three more times into the same exact space And then single crochet into the next chain one space and we're going to repeat that all the way around in order to have uh, that scallop edging at the base of our dress so chain three double crochet three more double crochets into the same exact space where that chain three comes from and then single crochet into the next chain one space and go all the way around I'll meet you back at this point so when you make it all the way around the base of your dress I've placed my last uh, scallop in the last chain one space so you're going to go into this chain one space where the first scallop came out of and then you're going to make a slip stitch and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn And then the next thing that you're going to do is get rid of all the loose strands you're going to weave in all your ends I don't know how you prefer to do it you can do it by tying knots or by using a darning needle I'll weave this in later on because I don't have my darning needle here so uh, you're going to get two strands of your yarn remember we use fingering weight yarn we're going to use two strands and then we make a simple chain of about 250 chains or 220 in between there 220 to 250 and now uh, you're going to thread this strand of the chain into the darning needle and now uh, I want this chance this strand here to come out from the front so that we are able to tie and cinch in this part here so I'm going to start from the, the exact middle of the center of the front part sorry the exact middle of the front part so I'm going to go into those rows where I worked my first round of the bottom uh, ruffles I'm just going to go in and out of each and every row I hope you're seeing what I'm doing and then you're going to pull leave this tail behind here and we are going to continue to go all the way around the top going in and out of every row of the granny squares actually because at this point we were still working the granny squares so 
so let's do this this is the easiest part this is when you're coming to the end of your project and you're very happy about the outcome You just can't wait to see the final product so later on maybe I'll find time to push the top a bit lower but I also love the cropped version so it will depend if at all I get an order for it and the person wants it a little bit longer then I'll have to push the ruffles to the base a bit longer than what it is right now to the client's preferred uh, length. Okay, so we are back to the front and you're just going to give it a tug so that it's not so or you're going to just slide the ruffles so that they are evenly distributed because at the back the ruffles are so many so you're just going to evenly distribute them so that we don't have any space with so many of them And when you come here, you can attach some beads at the end here or tassels. Then at this point, you can tie at the front of your top. This helps us to hold uh, the lower bust, the lower part of our bust, so that it's not so big. If you want a loose fitting, then this may be optional for you you may not even do this you just leave it hanging but i thought the string would do us justice so i think the next thing that you're going to do is to work on the edging i'm not very sure about such an edging so i'm going to work on it to make it a little bit more beautiful so you're going to grab your edging color which is brown I know we are using a lot of it but uh, it's the color that I decided would be the main color so you're going to decide what color you want for your top make a slip knot then um, you're going to attach your yarn at any point let me demonstrate with the outer side of the top So you're going to go into this corner here, like that, attach your yarn, and you're going to chain three, place two more double crochets into the same corner, sorry, three more double crochets, not two, three double crochets like that, and then single crochet into the next space, and then you're going to chain three. Three double crochets into the same exact space like that and then single crochet into the next chain one space so this is going to give us those scallops that uh, look really nice on our top instead of having uh, the granny square edging so we're going to repeat that all the way up onto the strap So go all the way up onto the strap okay so when you get here I'll show you what to do make sure you're working on the right side of your work because these scallops have to face the right side of your work
so when you get here uh, we've worked all the way from down here all the way up and when you get here you're going to chain three and still place three double crochets into the same space and then single crochet into the next row then chain three three double crochets into the same row single crochet into the next row and repeat that all the way up so you're going to just go all around the armhole until you make it back to that point where we started the edging so this is how your work will look like We are almost coming to the end of our round so I'm chaining three and placing three double crochets into the last space and then I'm going to single crochet into the next space and make a slip stitch into that last that next space where the first scallop comes out of and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so at this point we are done with the edging of the first armhole so let me show you how that looks like i'm just tying a knot so that i get rid of the loose strand okay so when i lay my work flat you can see the effect that it has created this is way better than having it open like this anyway it's up to you you decide what you do for your top but I feel like this is more finished and I'm going to go ahead and work on this inner side as well as the armhole opening on the other side. So finally I'm done with the edging of the top and this is how the sleeves came out. This is how the edging looks like. It looks well finished. It has a final touch at least and this is better than what it was before and this is the front side the side with this string you can decide um, whether this string is to be tied either at the front or the back then this is the back side both sides are going to look exactly the same unless if you did uh you made a mistake somewhere but both sides are supposed to look the same and this is how simple and easy this top is i decided to have the this string tie at the back of the dress so that we have a very neat finishing at the front and yeah this is basically it i hope you had fun making this project make sure you tag me in your finished projects and if at all you would like to purchase any of my designs you can check out my website i'll be leaving the uh the website in the description box below and then yeah Please support my channel and support my craft and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!